a new consciousness is developing which sees the earth as a single organism and recognizes that an organism at war with itself is doomed. Hey, welcome back. We are on 2 Samuel chapter 15. After this, after what? Man, it's been so long since I read the previous chapter, I don't remember what this is after. It'd be nice if this was like a TV series instead of a book. You know, like have like a recap at the beginning of each episode. Last time on 2 Samuel, right? Why didn't God do that? Why go back to a time thousands of years ago to inspire ancient people with his divine word so they'll write books? Right? Wouldn't this be a more practical time to inspire someone with divine words so that they'll do a TV series? Right? I just, I just think that would be a more uh, effective way of handling that situation. Just putting that out there, give you guys something to ponder over. After this, Absalom bought a chariot and horses, and he hired 50 bodyguards to run ahead of him. Absalom, Absalom. You know, I remember hearing about this character from other chapters, but I have completely forgotten what the significance of this character is. I don't remember what he's all about. I guess that's what happens when you take a month-long break between readings. Man, it sure would be nice to have a recap. He got up early every morning and went out to the gate of the city. When people brought a case to the king for judgment, Absalom would ask where in Israel they were from and they would tell him their tribe. Then Absalom would say, You've really got a strong case here. It's too bad the king doesn't have anyone to hear it. I wish I were the judge, then everyone could bring their cases to me for judgment, and I would give them justice. When people tried to bow before him, Absalom wouldn't let them. Instead, he took them by the hand and kissed them. Absalom did this with everyone who came to the king for judgment, and so he stole the hearts of all the people of Israel. After four years, Absalom said to the king, let me go to Hebron to offer a sacrifice to the Lord and fulfill a vow I made to him. For while your servant was at Geshur and Aram, I promised a sacrifice to the Lord in Hebron if he would bring me back to Jerusalem. Well, it looks like he's going to be stealing the heart of the Lord as well. After all, something I do remember from previous chapters is that Yahweh loves his animal sacrifices. Right? Those burnt offerings, remember that? Just make sure that that thing has no defects. Right? Better not have any scabs, and it sure as fuck better not have one leg that's longer than the other ones. Uh, all right, the king told him, go and fulfill your vow. So Absalom went to Hebron, but while he was there, he sent secret messengers to all the tribes of Israel to stir up a rebellion against the king. As soon as you hear the ram's horn, his message read, you are to say, Absalom has been crowned king in Hebron. He took 200 men from Jerusalem with him as guests but they knew nothing of his intentions. While Absalom was offering the sacrifices, he sent for, what the fuck does that say? He sent for Ahithophel, one of David's counselors who lived in Gilo. Soon, many others also joined Absalom and the conspiracy gained momentum. A messenger soon arrived in Jerusalem to tell David, all Israel has joined Absalom in a conspiracy against you. Then we must flee at once or it will be too late, David urged his men. Hurry, if we get out of the city before Absalom arrives, both we and the city of Jerusalem will be spared from disaster. We are with you, his advisors replied. Do what you think is best. So the king and all his household set out at once. He left no one behind except ten of his concubines to look after the palace. He left no one behind except ten of his concubines to look after the palace. That's right. He left his concubines to guard his fucking palace. People are coming in to raid this place, and he left his concubines. They're, they're gonna get fucking raped. All right, I don't know that. We'll see what happens. The king and all his people set out on foot, pausing at the last house to let all the king's men move past to lead the way. There were 600 men from Gath who had come with David along with the king's bodyguard. 
Then the king turned and said to Ittai, a leader of the men from Gath, Why are you coming with us? Go on back to King Absalom, for you are a guest in Israel, a foreigner in exile. You arrived only recently, and should I force you today to wander with us? I don't even know where we will go. Go on back and take your kinsmen with you, and may the Lord show you his unfailing love and faithfulness. Well, the Lord wanted to show his unfailing love and faithfulness. Uh, I think it would be good for him to come down and say, hey, why don't you guys fucking get along? And, you know, he doesn't even have to command them to do that. We know from earlier chapters that he has the ability to influence people's emotions, how they react to situations, right? So he clearly has the power to do that. That would be a good way to show some unfailing love and faithfulness. But Atai said to the king, I vow by the Lord and by your own life that I will go wherever my lord the king goes, no matter what happens, whether it means life or death. David replied, All right, come with us. So Atai and all his men and their families went along. Everyone cried loudly as the king and his followers passed by. They crossed the Kidron Valley and then went out toward the wilderness. Zadok and all the Levites also came along, carrying the Ark of the Covenant of God. They set down the Ark of God, and Abiathar offered sacrifices until everyone had passed out of the city. Then the king instructed Zadok to take the Ark of God back into the city. If the Lord sees fit, David said, he will bring me back to see the Ark of the Tabernacle again. But if he... Uh, but if he is through with me, then let him do what seems best to him. The king also told Zadok the priest, Look, here is my plan. You and Abiathar should return quietly to the city with your son Ahimeaz and Abiathar's son Jonathan. I will stop at the shallows of the Jordan River and wait there for a report from you. So Zadok and Abiathar took the Ark of God back to the city and stayed there. David walked up the road to the Mount of Olives, weeping as he went. His head was covered, and his feet were bare as a sign of mourning. And the people who were with him covered their heads and wept as they climbed the hill. When someone told David that his advisor Ahithophel was now backing Absalom, David prayed, O oh Lord, let Ahithophel give Absalom foolish advice. When David reached the summit of the Mount of Olives, where people worshipped God, Hushai the Archite was waiting there for him. Hushai had torn his clothing and put dirt on his head as a sign of mourning. But David told him, If you go with me, you will only be a burden. Return to Jerusalem and tell Absalom, I will now be your advisor, O king, just as I was your father's advisor in the past. Then you can frustrate and counter Ahithophel's advice. Zadok and Abiathar the priests will be there. Tell them about the plans being made in the king's palace, and they will send their sons Ahimeaz and Jonathan to tell me what is going on. So David's friend Hushai returned to Jerusalem, getting there just as Absalom arrived. Alright, that was 2 Samuel chapter 15. Now we will be back with chapter 16.